Um, just to begin with, uh, the, the last, sometime during the last couple of years, um, the world passed through a new epoch, which is presumably for the first time ever, there are more people now living in urban areas than not in urban areas. Also more rec remarkably, actually, um, you know, we think of urbanization as a very long, very long history, which it does. But actually, it's really a 20th century phenomenon. I think this is probably why we have difficulty studying and understanding the urban phenomenon, because it is actually not very old. Um, and the kind of change that has taken place within 100 years is the Indian urban population, even though the proportion is just under 30% uh, in 2000, 2001, that the Indian urban population in 2001 was larger than the world urban population in 1900. When I say that uh, the 21st century uh, is really Asia century in terms of urban uh, phenomenon, that majority of the world's population is in any case in Asia, but the majority of the world's urban population will also be in Asia in the 21st century. India has a, has, uh, a particular self-image of being predominantly rural and agricultural, which shapes a lot of our thinking, which shapes government thinking, shapes people's thinking, that look, we're really a rural country and not an urban country, and therefore we need to be uh, thinking much more rural areas than urban areas. And the point I'm making is that, look, this is going to change. Unlike many other uh, development phenomena in the world, that during a time when you have very high uh, economic growth, urbanization accelerates. Uh, India has been exceptional in that during the time when our economic growth accelerated in the 1980s and 1990s, actually urban growth slowed down, urban population growth slowed down. Uh, but nonetheless, the absolute magnitude is large, that is 300 million people in urban areas, which does mean that in terms of thinking, in terms of planning, etc., that you do need much more attention than we have uh, had. Uh, one other uh, interesting thing about India has been that a settlement structure has been very stable for a very long period of time. So that you have the, that, that, uh, the number of urban settlements has not been increasing that much, relatively speaking. Um, and no one really expected such a slowdown. Um, when I worked on these issues in the early 1980s, 1983, I myself did um, uh, long-term urban growth projections. <coughs> what is interesting to me is that my projections on total population growth were almost on the dot, actually. Almost on the dot for a period of about 20 years. But my projections for urban growth, even though relatively conservative by any development phenomena, were clearly much higher. Now, having said that, I think that uh, it's difficult to say, but I do think there will now be an acceleration. But I've been wrong before, so I wouldn't, could be wrong again. Uh, uh, the other interesting thing about this is that the slowdown has been across the country, except in just two or three states. What is also very interesting is that some states actually, um, the, uh, the uh, urban population growth was slower than the statewide natural population growth. There's also a major slowdown in net migration. And the most that, that although the popular image in India and the world is people flocking to cities, it is just not the case in India. Um, popular, uh, uh, the, the popular impression <coughs> of an urban explosion is just not true. Um, then there has been an impression of urban rural inequality increasing in terms of income. That also is not true that the ratio of uh, urban income per capita, the ratio of rural income per capita, has been broadly constant uh, as far as we can tell over 20 30 years. So I, let me come to why I think that the urban growth has indeed slowed down. First is um, a somewhat counterintuitive uh, possible reason that is inadequate that after the Green Revolution of the uh, 1970s, early 1980s, there has been plateauing of agricultural productivity. And what really that means is that the, the, um, there isn't surplus labor being released uh, from uh, rural areas with a slowdown, uh, with a plateauing of agricultural productivity. Um, there's also perhaps been inadequate diversification of high value crops, but that may have been changing, I think, possibly in the last uh, decade. Uh, it's also been the case that uh, um, 
that with the with the policy concern with food prices and giving adequate return to farmers, which is clearly something that uh, you know politically is very important, that we have a price support regime, and that also therefore then the the the, the, um, the, the release of labour uh, becomes uh, much less. Second, um, uh, why urban growth could have slowed down is that uh, for a long period of time, our customs tariff structure um, was such that it favored capital intensive industry. Then you clearly have lower growth in labor using industry, and therefore uh, lower growth in uh, labor uh, um, uh, in, ma in manufacturing employment, and therefore less of a transfer from agriculture to rural pursuits to manufacturing, and uh, therefore urban labor. Because it was observed that small-scale industries are more labor-intensive, and therefore to promote employment in industry, we've had the long-standing policy, which was reversed only uh, about five years back, that we've had restrictions on the size of industries. So all the industries like clothing, shoes, leather goods, and actually 836 items that were enumerated at different points in time, which are thought to be labor intensive, that is uh, thought to be labor intensive and therefore amenable to small scale industries, those uh, those items were reserved for small scale industries that you're not allowed to have large clothing factories, for example. So as a consequence, unlike China, which has flooded the world with labor intensive uh, manufactured goods, um, that India has not. And therefore, again, that also restricted the growth of employment uh, in manufacturing over a long period of time, and therefore presumably in urban population growth. Then there are a number of labor market rigidities through legislation in terms of hiring and firing. Uh, and so that along with the custom tariff structure um, uh, encouraging capital intensive industry, to the extent that ex-ante an entrepreneur feels that he will have less uh, uh, flexibility in terms of altering uh, Altering employment structure <coughs> with uh, business cycles, that there's a greater tendency to do capital intensive uh, industry. So that also presumably reduced the growth of uh, employment in manufacturing industry and therefore urban uh, growth. As if that was not enough, we've had sort of an old tr uh, tradition of town planning from the UK, the uh, sort of garden city concept. Therefore, it was felt that industries should not be in cities. But somehow people feel that. Uh, these things should not be in cities. Or else, where else should they be? You know, because if you look at the history of urbanization, it had a lot to do with uh, uh, manufacturing uh, industry being located in urban areas. Um, cities also have traditionally always been um, centers for in entrepreneurship, incubators for entrepreneurship, and so that presumably also was reduced. Um, more recently, this is um, uh, this is the last uh, ten years or so. Uh, that has happened that judicial activism of people saying these are dirty things to have in the city. So that is also, to my mind, reduced uh, growth of ur urban growth uh, in India. As if this is not enough, we've had huge rigidities in urban land policy uh, to do with, uh, we have had a curious thing called the urban land ceiling. That under the urban land ceiling, no one is allowed to have owned land more than some amount in, in the largest metropolitan areas with 500 square meters. And so land assembly became a big problem because no one, no one person can own uh, more than 500 square, could own more than 500 square meters. So it's very difficult for even a developer to assemble land for development and so on. Uh, like so many other countries in the world, we've had rent control laws since after the Second World War. They still continue. So again, that slows down the restructuring of the urban form uh, over as, as incomes grow and as development takes place. I won't go into detail of all this, but there's been also excessive government control of urban land development in that a lot of land was nationalized uh, around cities and you could it was only through government permission that you could do land development. Um, finally, in terms of why urban growth has slowed down, is that we've also had, you just have to visit any Indian city to see that we have very, very inadequate urban infrastructure. 